Good morning. Happy Thursday. I have NeuroCoffee in hand and it is perfect. You know, some of my clients in the past, they have recovered pretty quickly and haven't had too many pelvic floor issues afterwards and others have had really bad issues after. So I'm curious if maybe creating like a yielding uh, strategy on the pelvic floor to accommodate all of that upward pressure might give some women more of a, like a, a, a tougher time, I guess, to recapture that overcoming strategy post delivery. You yeah. That's maybe one of the main driving mechanisms of pelvic floor dysfunction. I don't want to say, I don't want to say main because I don't think that's fair. I think that would be a leap, but, 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 but it does happen. So think about this. So we, I kind of mentioned this a second ago. If you put extra weight down on the pelvis, the, the bones have to absorb that. And so the bones yield just like all the other connective tissues. And so, so, it's, so it's really not that different. Now, let's put that load on there for three or four months and see what, what kind of adaptability that you end up with. So, so literally, they're going to get a pelvic shape change that's associated with the load that is based on, on how they're yielding you know, almost every waking moment of the day. Right. And so, so one of the things that they end up having trouble with is they, they will have like essentially a shape of a pelvis that is, that is, that is um, shaped like an inhale um, that will bias the, the pelvic diaphragm. And so it's very, very difficult to create enough pressure upward. So they can't close, they can't close the, the inlet of the pelvis like they would for an exhale. So, if, and, and I, I have to do this with a, it's plastic, so it doesn't bend, but, but imagine having this sucker open like this, right? You get a descended diaphragm here. And what I need to be able to do to exhale is I have to change the shape. I have to do that. I have to, I have to close the inlet to, to drive the, the concentric orientation here. And if they can't do that, then, then, you know, it's a, it's, it's a battle of, of downward force of the internal organs on top of something that can't push back up. And so then, you know, they have incontinence problems. They have uh, like just simple efforts of, of squatting or getting up out of a chair or climbing stairs and, and like all sorts of, of force related problems because they don't have that pressure mechanism back. And so literally what we started doing is we started securing the, the inlet of the pelvis. We just took an SI belt. Let me see if I got one right here, we got an SI belt. Hang on. So take an SI belt, secure the top of the pelvis. So you're getting the compressive strategy, right? We're just assisting the connective tissues through a passive compression. That allows the shape change to occur. And then almost, I mean, I don't wanna say immediately, but with some practice, they actually can learn how to, how to recreate the, the concentric orientation of the pelvic diaphragm, assuming, assuming the tissues are intact. Because you know, if they have like a, a vaginal delivery, you don't, you don't know what kind of destruction you got going on there. And then if there's an episiotomy or, or anything, or it's just a tear mm -hmm. as they're giving birth, then you, you've, got a, you've got a constraint change there that you're gonna have to deal with too. But, but, but again, if, if we look at this from the shape change perspective, it's like, how do I make that impact? Like, wh what, is the, what is the deficit, which you can sort of identify when you think about it. It's, it's just like working with a, like a, a, a narrow ISA person that, that can't create the, the concept of orientation when they jump off a box and their knees kind of go together. Um, you're gonna see similar behaviors with, with, like I said, squats and step ups and having them trying to get into half, half kneeling is typically uncomfortable for them. Um, because again, they can't create the, the exhale position of the pelvis, which gives them the IR to comfortably be in a half kneeling position. So you'll get all sorts of like knee pain and hip impingement symptoms and things like that. So, so just looking at it from the shape change perspective usually buys you um, a lot of real estate in regards to, to the recovery or inlet, okay. The inlet is is the inlet is the inlet has to close to create the exhaled position of the pelvis. Okay, gotcha. Just making sure. It's, when when the when the inlet is is expanded, 
Okay. Um, again, th that would uh, promote the eccentric orientation, right? Just by a normal, like an inhale to exhale representation of the pelvis. So these women are having trouble creating the, the upward pressure with the pelvic diaphragm, but I need a shape change in the pelvis for that to actually happen. And if they, if they've been, you know, if, if you put weight on top of the pelvis and it, and it, and it sort of flattens it out and opens it up like an inhale, they can't close it. So you have to retrain that. You have to mobilize it. Like I said, that's why we use the, the belt for the, the, the compressive um, element to, to help close the outlet so they can pressurize inside the pelvis. And this goes for anybody, just, just for the record. It's like, you'll see this on, on people that are trying to squat. It's like, you know, if you can't create a sufficient um, concentric orientation against internal forces. If I put 400 pounds in your back and you're trying to trying to stand up from a squat, I got news for you. It's the upward pressure internally that you have to create. Otherwise, you're not going up. Hey, Bill, um, jumping off uh, Paul's question, is there a way to uh, train those pelvic muscles directly? Yes. As a part of a compound movement? Yeah. And how, how do you do that? Like, um, is that, like Kegel so, exercises or something? Say again? Are they... Do you, is it like Kegel exercises or is it something different? Okay, so 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 Kegel exercises in isolation not very helpful, not very effective because it doesn't respect the position of the of the pelvis. So what you want to be able to do is you need to create the the shape change of the pelvis, and so we can do that by any number of positions. So when you lay on your side, for instance, you get you get compression. From, from side to side, and then you can create the anterior posterior expansion. So that's the advantage of, of being a sideline. Um, if, you, if you're having trouble creating a concentric orientation of, of the, the pelvic diaphragm, you need to number one, be able to capture that position first and foremost. And so if you've seen any of the like uh, inverted lazy bear exercises and things like that, where you're like quadruped, where you're, where you're butt up, head down kind of a thing, well, what that does is, is it approximates what looks like a squat um, but it's an unweighted pelvic outlet. And so that gives you a mechanical advantage to create the concentric orientation. And so, so that's why we put people in, the, in those positions. So, so if I put you, you hips up, head down, and the, the, diaphragm's un, the pelvic diaphragm is unweighted, and I teach you to exhale in that position, I've just captured the hip position that I need. I can start to drive the pelvic orientation that I need, and I get a, I get a, a concentrically oriented uh, pelvic outlet based on the, the breathing pattern. And so just like progressive resistance exercise of putting weight on the bar, all you gotta do is progressively change the position of the body Right? I slowly bring you to upright activities and I keep trying to drive the same strategy of, of exhalation and concentric orientation. And so eventually my inverted lazy bear, right, where, where you're in quadruped or on your elbows with your hips up, eventually becomes my box squat.